So we got a little one today, a tiny little emulation handheld, the GKD Pixel, or the Game Kitty Pixel. I hate these companies using Kitty in their name, but let's not let that take us away from if this thing is actually awesome, you know? But I've been looking forward to this thing. I was supposed to receive it a long while ago, but due to delays, shipping issues, I don't freaking know. Uh, I'm just now getting my hands on one. Uh, Go Game Geek sent this to me for purpose review, so we got to check it out. This is a little fella, and it's all metal. There's multiple colors that they make, but I got the green one here today. This thing looks slick, man, but is it any good? A little tiny guy. So I know they sell these with different like micro SD cards. I believe this one we got 64 gigabyte little Game Kitty micro SD card. It's branded Game Kitty. Okay. But paint's already kind of chipping off of the edge of it. You know, sometimes these, these micro SD cards are not the greatest of quality. It's, you know, recommended to get a better card and transfer stuff over. But I haven't had an issue. Let's go ahead and power this thing on. Hopefully it's got some juice. Okay, well, it doesn't want to power on. Son of a bitch. Did this come with a cable to charge it? No, it did not. Okay, that's a battery indicator down there, it looks like. This thing is drained, dude. We may have to come back in a moment. Let's take a look at this. So that's power, and then that's a menu button. And battery indicator. And we have a uh, headphone jack at the bottom. L1, L2, all the shoulder buttons up top, kind of weird. But that might work okay. And then volume on the side, and that's pretty much it. D-pad feels a little mushy. Buttons feel okay. But, you know, in practice, we'll have to figure this out. So here we go. Charge this thing up a bit. Uh, I think that says 45%. But here we go. We're in the uh, front end. Let's take a look at what we got going on here. Emulators, games, RetroArch, test app settings. Okay. Emulators. Looks like we got multiple versions of uh, Final Burn Alpha, Famicom, Game Boy. Uh, what do we go up to here? PlayStation 1? Yeah, okay. A games folder? It's like some kind of like shareware type stuff. Okay. RetroArch. More emulators. What is this? Test. Even more emulators. Okay. App. So like you got like audio playing apps, file manager. Input tester, nothing amazing. And then settings, about, tells you how much storage you got left, the software version, okay. You can appreciate them. What the hell is the point of this? Okay, like a little QR code. And then settings, a few options there. Okay, you can go in the terminal and change the theme, it looks like. So uh, let's try some of these emulators out. I don't know what's up with these multiple final burns, but let's load up a game. A little, little Neo Geo action, King of Fighters 98. The screen's looking pretty good. The audio coming out of this little speaker is uh, decently loud. I'm seeing some slight uh, like screen tears. Like, might be more apparent in like a side scrolling game, but I did notice them here. But beside that, this is playing well. And I think if we hit power, it exits. Okay, let's check out some Famicom or NES. I'm sure they just got it mixed together. Looks like it's pretty much the full, uh, Game list for each of these systems so far. Okay, I was kind of worried I was going to see a lot of screen tearing on NES games. And so far, I am not, but there is a lot of shimmering, though. 
I mean, this obviously isn't going to be the uh, most powerful emulation handheld out there. These face buttons, they're a little stiff, but they're performing all right. It's just a very, it's a small cramped handheld. Okay, little ghosts and goblins on the uh, Game Boy Color. The screen looks great for being so damn small. But there, there is a little bit of uh, tearing and shimmering going on in these games, though. But it, it's... It's not crazy distracting, though, but I, I, I just notice it. I don't think there's any options to... do anything, no. Okay, a little Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on Sega Genesis. I'm not seeing any like weird screen tearing or anything with this emulator. PlayStation 1. What do we got here? Obviously, this is not going to be like the full game list here. Okay, so little little rival schools on PlayStation 1. Let's see how this performs. You know, PlayStation 1 can run on like tons of devices, man. So it's usually not surprising, but this is like the highest end system that came preloaded on this uh, this handheld. So. It's really curious to see. And this is performing just fine. It's kind of weird with these uh, shoulder buttons to access them, but I mean, you're not going to need them in everything. Oh, crap. That's still really cool. Like a little tiny ass handheld playing PS1. Why not? Oh, my God. Yeah, and this is playing just fine. Let's see if Doom plays. Okay. Playing perfectly fine. Freaking sweet, dude. Well, that's pretty awesome. All right, what else we got on here? And then in test, what what is all this? 3DO. Is there 3DO games on here? Wolfenstein 3D. I have my doubts that 3DO is actually going to run, but okay, let's try it. Okay. So 3DO version of Wolfenstein's on here, and it seems to run okay. I have my doubts that other 3DO games would uh, run all right, but hey, there you go. There's Virtual Boy. You got Wario Land. It's not playing in, in, you know, red and black, though, unfortunately. And I didn't see any uh, any way to change that. Yeah, it's still pretty cool. The hell is this? Was this like a freaking calculator or something? I don't know what that was. What the hell is this? PCFX. There's no ROMs though. PlayStation memory card. Uh, just to access memory card. Like memory card manager. That's it. Okay, that's kind of lame. Well, I mean, there you go. Like, what do I think of this? First off, I'm seeing the price point of this thing around $80 or so. Just depends on if you get it with a micro SD card full of games or not. 
Build quality is nice. Screen looks nice. Some of the emulators do seem to have some shimmering and uh, screen tearing. But uh, overall, it's not bad. But I think at the price point, uh, you could do better, in my opinion. Neat handheld. I like the metal, you know, the metal housing and whatnot. Uh, the shoulder buttons are kind of wonky, just the way they, they're situated. But, you know, it's a compact little thing. It might be for you. Most likely it's not. I think it's neat, but would I buy this for myself? Most likely not. 99.9% .9 chance I would go for something else. Probably from Ambernick than something like this. But there you go. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Bye.